It has been an absolute insane week in the world of AI. One of the biggest weeks I've seen in a while in terms of news and updates coming out. We had like one frontier model and then 24 hours later, another one was released. If there's just so much happening, let's break it all down. So let's start with the biggest news topic of the week, which is Gemini 3. And they are calling it a new era of intelligence. And outside of this blog post, they haven't done a whole lot to hype it up but they are saying, hey, it's a new era of intelligence. Does that match the hype, uh, at least the hype in the AI community? This model's been like, hey, it's coming, it's coming, and now it is finally here. Was it worth the wait? And I think Gemini 3 Pro was what I thought GPT-5 was going to be. Gemini 3 Pro is phenomenal. It is an amazing model. You can see the benchmarks here. We have Humanity's last exam. We can see like no tools with search and code execution. And you can see the difference in comparison to other models. And Humanity's last exam is a very tough benchmark. But if we go down the list here, you can see it is in bold. You can see how Gemini 3 compares to all the other models. And it wins in every single category, except for the SWE Bench Verified, which is agentic coding. It is like 1.1 percentage behind Claude Sonnet 4.5. So this model is absolutely insane, but it's not just the benchmarks, it passes the human vibe as well. You can see Gemini 3 Pro first for text, web development first, vision first. You get the idea, it is first in every category. You can actually see here as like the overall on Ella Marina, it is literally first across the board. If you notice Grok 4.1 thinking, is in second and grok was actually released this past week as well grok 4 struggled with two issues 12 percent hallucination rate and they rebuilt that and it resulted in a 4.2 percent hallucination rate or 65 percent reduction and then also grok 4.1 scored second on creative writing as they enhance creative capabilities there's also end-to-end -end encryption chat however it has to be on x chat not grok itself so they haven't enabled end-to-end -end across the board but only on just x they've also sped up grok 4.1 so you can see the first token latency versus like 500 word generation you can kind of see what that all looks like there is this nice little chart here and you can kind of see it all keep in mind grok 4.1 was released and then like 24 hours later, Gemini 3 Pro was released. So Grok enjoyed its like single day as number one on Ella Marina. But as you can see here, according to Ella Marina, Gemini is first. But then also we have like the hallucination rate. We can see the percentages of each first token latency. And you can see not only is Gemini 3 Pro so good, but it's also the fastest and it is relatively cheap, especially considering how expensive the API cost is of Grok 4.1. So Grok 4.1 was really interesting. And then 24 hours later, Google's like, no, Gemini 3 Pro is like that much better. But it's not just text output. Gemini 3 has something that can output called dynamic views. So instead of just giving you text output, it can actually generate little graphs or interactive things as you ask it questions. So it's not just giving you a wall of text anymore. It has the capability of making it interactive for you to learn and read from the information it spits out. And then if you're a Google AI Ultra subscriber, there's something called the Gemini agent, which is an agent that lives inside of Gemini. And you can ask it questions. You can have it like read your emails, go through your calendar. It's literally an agent built into Gemini, but right now it's only for AI Ultra subscribers. Google also released Gemini 3 DeepThink, which is its competitor to OpenAI's O series model. So it just has enhanced reasoning, enhanced thinking. And just when you thought that was the end of the wave of Google announcements, nope, they released Google Anti-Gravity. So Anti-Gravity is a VS Code application but it has Google specific as AI specific features built in. Anti-Gravity has an agent first interface that lets you deploy autonomous agents that can plan, execute and verify complex tasks across your terminal and editor and browser. It can literally take over the browser, click away. It can show you the terminal. It's just a really enhanced coding application with AI at the forefront. And the crazy part is their plans start at $0 a month right now as it's in public preview. So if you like vibe coding, 
this is definitely something you should check out. You can see the models you have access to, and it's completely free. I've used anti-gravity to create a Fortnite styled game with multiplayer in like five prompts and it was playable. And I should have a video about anti-gravity later in the week. It is an absolutely really, really good product. And if you go to download, they have access or they have availability for all the different platforms. So if you use Mac, they have you covered Windows and they even have our Penguin friends over at Linux. All right, we can move on now, right? That's the end of the Google updates. No, you're wrong, there's one more. Introducing Nano Banana Pro. Turn your visions into studio quality designs with unprecedented control, improved text rendering, and enhanced world knowledge. Nano Banana Pro is built on top of Gemini 3 Pro. It has native 2K resolution. You can do 4K upscaling. And Google says that if one letter is wrong in generating text, it will be immediately obvious. If the hands and it has the wrong number of fingers, Nano Banana Pro will address this by transitioning to a more advanced underlying model and then fix the problem for you. You can adjust camera angles, change focus, apply different colors. It is a much more enhanced model that really understands or is supposed to understand what you ask and what you want it to do. And with Gemini 3 and Nano Banana Pro, they're kind of rolling it out across the board to all their different products. So Notebook LM subscribers are going to get it. Workspace customers are getting it in Google Slides, Vids, Google AI Studio is getting it, Vertex AI, and even Anti-Gravity has it where you can use Nano Banana Pro to generate assets within Anti-Gravity. It is absolutely insane. But keep in mind the pricing isn't cheap, especially if you're going through the API. You're looking at 24 cents for a 4K image or 13 cents for a 1 or 2K resolution image. But the quality jump is apparently so good that it makes sense, especially if you're using it from a professional setting. And I'll have a video about Nano Banana Pro tomorrow. So if you want to see that, don't forget to subscribe. If you're a ChatGPT fan and you do coding, well, you're in luck because Codex has an update for you as well this week. They didn't want to be left out. Sam Altman was like, hey, don't forget about me. I'm doing stuff too. So GPT 5.1 Codex maths is a massive enhancement. So it can actually work across spanning millions of tokens through something called compaction. So it will literally work for massive projects and it has 30% less reasoning tokens compared to the regular codex model that they used to use before. So according to SWE bench verified benchmark, it is now the highest ranked model on that benchmark, which is pretty good for agentic coding, which is good if you're a codex user because you want to have something that is good at agentic coding. It just makes sense. And it is available right now for anyone using ChatGPT Plus, Pro Business, Education, or Enterprise Plans. API access is coming soon. When you hear 11 Labs, you're probably thinking audio and voice and anything to do with sound. Well, guess what? They're working into image and video now, and you can bring your ideas to life in one click. So they're actually just going to use VO, Sora, Kling, WAN, C-Dance, all the best video models. And then it's going to combine those video models with 11 Labs audio. So you can bring your voice, music, and sound effects from 11 Labs and kind of pair it with the videos that it generates. So you can see what it looks like here, a cinematic shot of an astronaut floating in space. And they're opting for Sora 2 Pro. You can see the size, the everything that they set. They're going to hit submit. It's going to create the video. And then it's going to come up with like a little timeline that you can see here. And now, from the timeline, you can actually add your voiceover. You can add your sound effects or whatever you want. And that all comes from 11 labs. And you can kind of see here, like you can have your bespoke background music or layer sound effects and adjust timing and refine narration all on a single timeline. And then you can like export your polished video. So I think 11 labs approach of this is really cool because they specialized in one area and they do it extremely well. And they're like, hey, we can just build on top of what other people are already doing. Replit has released something called Design Mode, and guess what? It is built with the new Gemini 3 model. So it lets anyone create a beautiful interactive mock-up and static sites in under just 
two minutes. And they're saying because it's using Gemini 3, it understands layout, color, and visual hierarchy, and not just code. It actually has a good idea of the entire page design. And I can tell you Gemini 3 is really good at design. And then we have Meta, which released Segment Anything Model 3, or SAM 3, and Segment Anything Playground. And you can kind of see here, you can actually now type like elephant, and it's able to take that segment out of the video and know exactly what you're talking about. So you can see people on it, it's able to highlight it and understand, hey, this is people in the video. Or in this image here, they're or in the video here, they like highlighted the fish and it understood. You can also click the penguin and you can subtract the otter in the background. It is absolutely insane what's capable, what AI is capable of. And then we had Microsoft Ignite 2025, and there's a lot there. I'm going to break this down as best as possible, but the whole shift is basically towards agents. They want to move away from like you talking to a large language model and getting out text, and they want the model, they want AI to work for you. So there's something called Agent 365, and it's for like AIT administration, and employees can also start building their own bots, and they can start building their own workflows or agents that are going to do work for them. But that's not all. There's also first party agents. So Microsoft isn't just letting you build agents. They want to sell you pre-made agents that they've designed to automate specific jobs or automate specific tasks. Microsoft 365 Copilot is getting updates as well. And you can guess it's AI related because I'm talking about it. So Excel can now write Python code generate charts, analyze risks from just a simple prompt. PowerPoint can build decks for you. And if you're using Microsoft Word, the AI can now organize your complex information. There is also App Builder, which allows anyone to build an app within Microsoft 365 with just a prompt. They had a lot more, but that kind of covers all the major AI announcements. Speaking of major news, NVIDIA, Microsoft poured $15 billion into Anthropic for a new AI alliance. So Anthropic commits to purchase $30 billion from Microsoft's cloud computing. So another week, another alliance, more money that is changing hands. So I was curious and I went to perplexity and I said, hey, can you make a table of companies investing in Anthropic? And you can kind of see here what this looks like. So you can see here, Amazon with strategic cloud and equity, 8 billion, Google, 3 billion, same strategic cloud and equity. Microsoft, guess what? 5 billion, but I don't even know if that includes the amount that I just mentioned in the article prior. Then we have Nvidia with 10 billion. And you can kind of see here, we go through the list and you can see all the different billions and different companies that are investing into Anthropic. Do you ever hear the expression, don't put all your eggs in one basket? Well, Anthropic took that to heart. All right, a couple of other small minor updates for this week. We have group chats in ChatGPT. So you can actually create a little chat. You can invite your friends to the chat and now you can talk to each other back and forth. Every single time you send a message in the chat, ChatGPT will read the message and then decide if it should respond or not. So I've actually had some fun playing around with this feature and I told it to only ever respond with emojis and emoji the messages never reply and after a little bit of training it back and forth and we're going to use the word training I totally didn't bully it to say hey only emoji my message it actually only emoji messages not just for myself but everyone in our group chat so kind of a interesting feature i don't know is this a feature you're going to use do you plan to make group chats in chat gpt and then invite all your friends is that going to be your go-to Hey guys, quick, let's open up ChatGPT to message my buddy. I think the idea is really cool that you have like an AI bot in there with you all the time. Just don't know how I feel about that. And lastly, we have Midjourney Video is coming with version 8 model, which is going to be launching in the near future. So maybe we'll cover that in a future video. That's all the AI news I got for you for this week. If you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Like the video, drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.